Okay, so we discussed what is micro expressions. Okay, these are a very, uh, you know, uh, fleeting facial expressions that are lasting for a very few seconds. And if you want to identify deception, you need to understand that is these micro expressions are very minimal and it comes in a very initial stage of the facial expression. Okay, if you're very observant enough, you'll be able to identify it. Okay, but if you ignore such micro expressions, maybe you will not even understand if the person is telling lie. Okay, yeah, that is what you need to understand. The second important point is that interchannel um, discrepancies. Okay, a second nonverbal cue of revealing of deception is known as the interchannel discrepancies. Okay, the term channel refers to type of nonverbal cues. For instance, any kind of facial expressions are, uh, sorry, any kind of facial expressions are one channel and body movement is another channel. Okay, yeah, and that is where we call them as interchannel discrepancies. Okay, yeah, for instance, what happens is when any kind of discrepancies happens, there is no uh, relationship between what you're talking and what you're expressing. Okay, yeah, this could be one of the examples. So here, basically, what they're trying to tell you is um, definitely is okay. Facial expressions becomes one channel and the body movements becomes another channel. Okay. These are in these are inconsistencies between nonverbal cues from different basic channels. These result from the fact that people who are lying often find it difficult to control all these channels at once. Okay, so basically what we are trying to understand is in interchannel discrepancies, whenever a person is trying to hide something, there are multiple nonverbal expressions that has been coming in between. So what happens is if you're trying to at least not show that expression on the eyes, it will definitely be there on the face. Or if you're not showing it in the eyes and you're not expressing it in the face also, but for some reason, it is shown in your body language, the kind of move that, that you make or the, the kind of movement that you, that you take, okay? Yeah. So uh, most of the social psychology researchers have found out that it is very difficult for you to uh, basically avoid all the body movements and all the facial expressions at once, okay? That is the reason it is very easy to identify these interchannel discrepancies that occurs, okay? Even in counseling situations, we definitely tend to do these things with our clients, okay? We, we don't know our clients because they are strangers, but the basic uh, core value in counseling is we do counseling as a very professional relationship and we keep in mind that it is trust, okay? Based on the trust, we are trying to believe our client, okay? But when they show any kind of discrepancies, that is when we will uh, be able to identify that, you know, okay, there is somewhere something that is going wrong. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yes, Rudrani, you raised your hand. Ma'am, it's not about deception, but uh, there is one more thing, right? The therapist will uh, mirror the movements, hand movements and expressions done by the client in order to make them more comfortable. Mm. And they're not opening up. I've heard this, that they start mirroring the same kind of moments. Okay, who will start imitating the same kind of moments? Can I understand? Ma'am, the therapist. Okay, the therapist starts mirroring and therapist will start showing that kind of body language so that the yes, client understands. Uh, like crossing your arms. So if the client is doing that, uh, huh? the therapist should also do that because, so that he gives the same kind of energy to the client. Okay, so to just be in par with the client, okay, we try to do this. Okay, yes, uh, this is for positive expressions, right? Yeah, so what happens, oh. for example, in the same example, what you're telling, what if your client is actually, uh, you know, uh, probably shaking uh, his legs very badly? Mama, so I've he... heard this, I don't know, but I've heard this, it's a part of. Uh... Social psychology. It is right. It is right. To remain in, yes. 
ma'am but wouldn't be it like a mock like the like the client is coming to you for help and you do this and he will feel like uh, am i being made fun of like won't you feel like that yes akshata but what have what she is trying to tell is you don't make it so evident okay what she is trying to tell us see that example um, i don't know to what extent it is suitable i'll give you another example the client is talking about an emotional incident and for time being the kind of emotional expression the client is showing is that okay the client becomes very 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 sad okay and she keeps a very low volume she is not crying but almost she is going to cry okay now so what happens is you also in sync your facial expressions with the client that is the time when you start not laughing or that is the time where you you will not probably put your you know you go back like this and sit no you need to be really aware of your body language okay that time what you are trying to do is you are trying to in sync your emotions with the client okay yeah and that is nothing but okay you are trying to be empathetic you are trying to be in sync with the client okay understanding the here and now of the client okay it is called as maybe that was the example she was trying to explain yeah yes, like you said we see there's a lot of difference between imitating and mirroring you understood right yeah you should yes, not ma'am thank you should you. not yeah you should not make them feel it is a uh, what to say imitation you should make yes, them feel it is more like a mirroring if they are leaning forward and they have their head in their hand the therapist can do this after some time not the not at the moment that they do it so like it doesn't make them feel uncomfortable or like the therapist is mocking them right right very true in no circumstance you should make them feel that you are mocking at that particular uh, situation yes perfectly right okay yeah so uh, the second important point was about this okay interchannel discrepancies okay identifying the interchannel discrepancies it's very very important and you can identify it very easily okay these things are very important in your practice okay please do keep this in mind okay the next important point is of course eye contact okay uh, so efforts at um, description are often uh, revealed by certain aspects of eye contact people who are lying often blink more and they often show pupils that are more uh, 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 dilated than people who are telling the truth okay they may also show an unusually low level of eye contact or surprisingly an unusual unusually very high amount of eye contact okay yeah and then their attempt to fake being honest by looking others right in the eyes okay yeah some people look below when they are lying okay and the eyes comes a little below but some people they very daringly do that so when they daringly do that i think they completely uh, in a very abnormal manner they actually focus on your eye they give a very strong eye contact and they tell a lie okay now this definitely depends on the individual's personality okay yeah how you want to express it now if you really know the person you will really get to know that whether there is any kind of deception that is happening okay yeah this is this is very very easy to identify and especially identifying any kind of deception is very easy with your own family members okay it is very easy with your own friends it's very easy with the circle that you are trying to interact with them on an everyday basis it is quite easy actually okay but then with strangers it is a little different difficult okay it's a little difficult but if you pay keen close attention i think through experience that is also possible okay uh, the next point um exaggerated facial expressions finally people who are lying sometimes show exaggerated facial expressions they may smile more or more broadly than usual or may show greater sorrow than is typical in a given situation okay so when you identify any kind of unusual behaviors okay it is very very evident right yeah especially have you ever seen that you know uh, when children they are trying to lie 
they probably okay do exaggerate a lot of facial expressions and they do that it's very easy for uh, the elders to identify it okay yeah a prime example someone says no to a request you have made and then shows exaggerated regret this is a good sign that the reason the person has uh, uh, suppelled for saying no may not be true okay yeah so if anybody is asking you for uh, anything okay then what happens is uh, now usually uh, basically what happens is a very common uh, a very common factor of understanding uh, 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 probably uh, this is or uh, probably when uh, people offer you something and you deny it okay but your facial expression is telling that you know i want to accept it but you don't accept it okay yeah this is something that you can identify such kind of deceptions deceptions can also be intentions okay it can also be intentions so i hope you are clear about you know exaggerated facial expressions okay then uh yes able you want to tell something before we sum up yeah ma'am a person who knows or is aware about his own bodily expression eye contact and all those things can mm -hmm. he control these emotions all at once while he is telling a lie that's which what makes, social psychologist makes, has yeah social psychologist has identified that you know or uh, they can control it okay but even if they try controlling it it is easy to identify they can control i'm not telling no Okay, they can control, but you can easily make out that there is something that is unusual. Okay, so they have done a lot of, uh, uh, probably, uh, you know, uh, researches on these lines, and they are trying to tell that yes, though that is what they are trying to tell. Even if you try to uh, fade off one particular, uh, you know, uh, body language or one particular facial expressions, okay, the other things will become very evident. You can easily make out. Okay. So, in uh, one way or the other, the um, deception can be easily identified. Yeah, right? definitely, definitely, definitely. If you have keen observation, and if you know that you are interacting with that particular person for, uh, at least you know you know that person more than being a st stranger, you know that individual. Okay, then it's very easy. Okay, I um, I should not be making a such kind of a statement, but then. Uh, many a times we uh, get to know if there's any kind of deceptions used by our parents okay and we realize it and we don't tell it out many a times we don't tell it out or we don't try to argue about it okay yeah this is one such examples that uh, will make you understand that yes no doubt that you know uh, there is a typical unusual behavior that they express or another important way of doing that is probably they suddenly become silent they suddenly don't uh, probably Uh, talk or express okay yes rudrani and then i'm um, i saw it in a movie that uh, a girl she used to blink very like hard every time she used to abuse so like her body was rejecting it but she still used to do it so like a guy he pointed it out that every time you say abusive word you blink very hard like your body keeps rejecting that word but you still have to say it okay okay what was that like mom her body she knew that she didn't but her like her expression like people can tell that she doesn't want to say it but she's still saying it so like just to you know mom i can't explain it but i just wanted to tell this okay my question is is it something related to any other kind of uh, you know psychological problems or is she quite normal that was my question mom i don't know why she was maybe she was lying that's why okay Okay, maybe yes, yeah. Able, ma'am. Uh, is it true that mothers could easily identify the expressions of their children? Like um, every time when I tell, it should be a little time, loud. Is it true that mother? Mothers could easily identify uh, when they are uh, children are telling a lie or a deception. Hundred percent. Because I, yes. Because I have felt that, ma'am. Because when when I tell a lie to my mother, she would easily find it out, whatever I do. So yes. Yes, very true, very true. That is what we are trying to, you know, learn here. Yeah, yeah. In some, uh, in in summary, I'm I'm going to continue. In summary, 
uh, do careful attention to non-verbal cues and to various aspects of the way people speak. Example, the pitch of their voice, we can often tell when others are lying or merely trying to hide their feelings from us. Okay, so whenever you try to pay keen attention on all these areas, it's very easy for you to identify the deception. Okay, the effects of deceptions on social relations. Okay, yeah, so what happens is many a times deception becomes a very uh, big hindrance in the uh, social relationship. Okay, because what happens is if you start terribly doing it, okay, then what happens is it can create a lot of trust issues in a relationship, okay, especially with spouse, with parents, with close friends, okay, be it in any kind of interpersonal relationship, okay, uh, it, it, it's, it, uh, sorry, research has trying to tell us that, you know, uh, you should not probably try to overdo it. When you try to overdo it, then what happens is it can develop a lot of trust issues. Okay. Yeah. So first recent findings indicate that when people find themselves on the receiving end of lies, they react with a mistrust of and disliking uh, towards the liar. Okay. Yeah. So if you're trying to continuously try to use deception or continuously you're trying to lie, then people will start perceiving you in a very different manner, okay? And most of us who have tried to lie a couple of times have definitely experienced it, okay? Yeah, so in fact, the more lies a stranger tells, the more these people are disliked and the less they are trusted, okay? This we are aware of. Furthermore, and perhaps of even greater interest, after being exposed to someone who has lied, most people are more willing to engage in such behavior themselves, okay? Many a times what happens is some people, they just can't stop telling a lie, okay? Yeah, so this behavior can really cause a lot of issues in the interpersonal relationship, okay? Yeah, because this topic is very closely related to the concept of trust, okay? Evidences for such effects is provided by Research conducted by Taylor in the year 2006, which found that when people had information suggesting clearly that another person had lied to them, they were more likely to lie themselves and not just to the person who has lied to them. They are also more willing to lie to the others also. Okay, so evidences have uh, trying to tell us that, okay, when you start suggestibly telling you know, lie very frequently, okay? Yeah, you try to continue to do that, okay? And many a times you start lying to your own self, okay? For that kind of personal satisfaction you want to gain. Yeah? So together, these findings indicate that lying uh, undermines the quality of social relations. Once it begins in a relationship or group, it is difficult to reverse. And the result may be a serious decline in mutual trust and faith. Okay, yeah. So uh, that is why they say that it has a lot to do with the social relationship. Okay, yeah. and we have always witnessed this in our day-to-day -day lives also. Okay, yeah. many a times what happens is because of deceptions, because of, you know, uh, people constantly lying and all that, so much of trust is lost in relationship. Especially it can happen between parents and children. It can highly happen between spouse. Okay, it can lead to uh, also divorce many a times. Yeah, so these are the common factors which we have seen in the social situations. All right, yeah. So as social psychologists and as psychology students, it's very, very important for you to develop these kind of, uh, you know, uh, sensitive observation skills in order to understand when a person is using any kind of deceptions, okay? We will move on to the next topic. The next topic is attribution, okay? What is attribution? The process through which we seek such information and draw inferences is known as attribution, okay? So more formally, attribution refers to our efforts to understand the cause behind others' behavior and on some occasions, the cause behind our behavior too, okay? Yeah, 
so many a times whenever you do something you sit and attribute to your own self okay why did i do that okay or what made me react uh, you know this way or another aspect or another angle to attribution is that okay you are trying to find out okay why the other person did this to me okay what could be the reason okay for example you meet a very attractive person at a party you would like to see him or her again so you ask would you like to get together for a movie next week the dreams of a wonderful uh, romance are shattered when the person answers no sorry okay so definitely yes with a lot of intentions you go and make a request to that person okay and what happens is the person rejected it okay so i can't do it next week now you are left wondering why they refused your invitation okay your first question will be why did they refuse your invitation okay furthermore okay you start now furthermore your attribution will start okay so furthermore you will start thinking on all these lines because they don't like you as much as you like them or is it because they are currently in a serious relationship and don't want to date anyone else okay but or it could also be because they are so busy with other uh, commitments and they have no spare time okay now so now each individual's attribution will differ according to the intentions okay now if you really wanted to date her and if you really wanted to make her your girlfriend okay the first attribution maybe that comes to your mind is is she already in a very serious relationship and she doesn't want to talk to someone else okay or if you want to convince your own self okay what you will be telling yourself is no 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 maybe she is quite busy and she has some other commitment that is the reason she didn't want to spare time with me okay now so don't you think each person's attribution will definitely differ and the second important point is the way you attribute will depend upon your own personal uh, aspects or your own personal attribution how you want to interpret it okay yeah so on one line if you feel that on one line you may actually attribute saying that you know maybe she already has another boyfriend or in another angle if you do if your if your own uh, mind is telling you no 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 that will not be the reality okay on the other angle it, it happens that you know maybe she is quite busy that is why she did not agree okay so the conclusion you reach will be important to your self esteem okay yeah so these kind of statements you make depending upon the kind of self esteem you are having okay you would like to believe that this person wants to see you again but is just too busy right now and it will also strongly influence what you do next okay if you conclude that in fact they don't like you or are involved in a serious relationship the chances are lower that you will try to arrange another meeting okay now so this this present attribution okay will influence your decision making so later you decide whether you want to ask her once again or i should not ask her once again okay so if you probably have a feeling that she is in a serious relationship you might not go and approach because the the common statement that can come is what is the point she is already in a relationship okay but if your attribution if your attribution is trying to tell you that okay no 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 maybe she is busy that's why she rejected me and i have a feeling that she also likes me okay so this attribution will lead you to the next level and in that next level what you will do is you will probably try to arrange for another meeting okay yeah so this is what is attribution all about okay yeah so how you try to probably relate to different circumstances different incidences that basically happens in within you okay with you or within you okay yeah both is involved in attribution any doubt what is attribution was that example quite clear for you to understand yes ma'am okay fine 
So uh, yes, Abel, did you raise the hand now or it was before? No, no, it was it was earlier, ma'am. So earlier. just oh. to correct, just correct me if I am wrong. So attribution is something where we try to introspect ourselves on something that that we had done, right? Yeah, one incident that has occurred. Yes, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, you introspect, and not only that, you try to ask so many questions because. the persons if one if you see you had one ex, you you had one pattern you expected one kind of reaction okay now yeah? and you got some other reaction so you try to attribute where things went wrong probably what happened is it because of this is it because of that or is it because of something else okay so this is how your thought processes so attributions are basically the thought processes that involves in every incident or in every situation that you witness in social situations okay yeah so um, now we get into the theories of attribution okay uh, please stop me when it is time okay yeah so theories of attribution because attribution is complex any theories have been proposed to explain its operation here we focus on two classic views that continue to be especially influential example suppose you go to a restaurant and the young woman who greets you at the place wait to be seated uh signs smiles and acts in a friendly manner okay so you go to a restaurant you identify that there is no place for you to sit and all of a sudden some stranger is trying to give you a very very uh, what to say attractive smile okay yeah this happens um yeah this happens so now this is the first thing second we pay careful attention to actions that show what jones and davis term non common effects effects that can be caused by one specific factor but not by others okay yeah so why are actions uh, why are actions that produce non common effects informative because they allow us to zero in on the cause of others behavior okay now i will uh, probably we will come back to this particular slide if i put you to this particular example okay it becomes easier okay so we are trying to get into the first theory okay of attribution so yeah one minute Okay. Before I continue, I got a question in the chat box that man can attributions be both positive and negative? Yes, very much. Attributions can definitely be both. It can be positive as well as it can be negative. And what happens is, if the situation is negative, we try to attribute too many things. Okay. And if the situation is very positive, we try to just attribute a couple of things, and then depending upon that, we we do. Uh, we do take decisions okay even in negative circumstances we do take decisions but what happens is our uh, our amount of attribution is higher for negative uh, situations than for the positive situations okay so for example it is more like this now probably if someone really rejects you very badly okay or is uh, like somebody treats you in a very uh, bad manner especially this happened with your close friend which is so unexpected okay you can just imagine what will happen to your attribution okay you will be like what did i do that is the first question you will ask to yourself second question where did i go wrong was the mistake by my side or do you think the mistake was by her side okay imagine the number of attributions you are doing number of attributions that you are doing for a negative event will always be higher than for a positive event okay yeah so when we talk about uh, theories of attribution since it's quite complex okay a lot of uh, you know uh, a lot of theories have come up okay yeah 
so uh, first one is according to dones and david's theory okay so they try to say that we accomplish this task by focusing our attention on certain types of actions those most likely to prove uh, informative okay now what is the first thing and what is the second thing we will understand only when we look at this particular example okay for example imagine that one of your friend has just got engaged his future uh, his future spouse is very attractive has a great possibility uh, sorry 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 has a great personality is widely in love with your friend and is very rich what can you learn about your friend from his decision to marry this woman okay not much there are so many good reasons that you can choose among them okay now, now what happens is this particular example is giving you two contrast uh, uh, two contrast contrast kind of circumstance okay in one circumstance your friend is trying to marry her because everything is good in her she is very attractive she has a great personality okay and she really loves your friend a lot okay and she is very rich so what more you require in one particular proposal okay so this is one circumstance okay and then uh, now in contrast just try to look at this particular situation imagine that your friends uh, finances uh, your, your your sorry imagine your friend's fiance is very attractive but that she treats him with indifference and is known to be extremely boring okay now there is totally a negative uh, picture of this particular fiance okay or this particular person whom is going to get married to okay she is attractive that is one positive point apart from that she really treats him very indifferently okay and she is a very extremely boring personality okay she is deeply in debt she has a lot of financial problems okay and she is known to be someone who usually lives for beyond her means okay now you feel that she is really not so uh, good to really become his heir probably okay yeah so now does the fact that your friend is marrying this woman tell you anything about him under this conditions okay definitely yes when you look at when you look at it okay now you will be able to understand with this example okay what exactly are we trying to talk about this particular circumstance of non common effects and common effects okay now so in a non common effect where do you attribute and in a non common effect where do you attribute okay so probably i may have to repeat this once again in the next class because it's time for lunch okay so we will come back to this theory i will show you this example again and i will tell you what are the non common and what are the common factors that we try to attribute okay if possible you also think and come back yeah okay, is it all right yes ma'am 